Hello. Now we'll be looking at coding and decoding questions. So these questions come under reasoning and they specifically involve a code which is set for certain letters or certain words. So in this case, if you look at the question, in a certain code, 8 to 9 means how art thou? So how art thou is the normal uh, English word, uh, is a string of normal English words and 8 to 9 is the representation. So how can correspond to either 8, 2 or 9? Again, art can correspond to either 8, 2 or 9 and thou can correspond to either 8, 2 or 9. Uh, a major mistake which people do in these questions is that uh, they will assume that the order in which the letters are given and the order in which the letters or the words are given and the order in which the codes are given uh, correspond to each other. And that is not really the case unless it's explicitly mentioned. Unless it is explicitly mentioned that in a certain code 8 to 9 is how art thou in some order, in, in that order only, then it makes sense. If it's not given, then it does not make sense. It, it, it's, uh, you cannot really assume that because something is present in some order, it has to be uh, the, it has to be that way. So unless the question cannot be solved using that data, unless it's a very ambiguous question, and even after two or three attempts, you're not able to solve that question because the data does not really match, or if there are too many possibilities, then probably you can assume it. Because in these tests, sometimes it happens that the paper setter might not really uh, might not really give out details as well about the question itself. So. Uh, it does not really make sense sometimes, but most of the time it will be uh, it will be specified uh, that it's uh, it's not in that order, or probably it has to be assumed that it's not in that order. So whenever you see that this question, assume that it's not in that order. That is, that is the first way to go. Assume that uh, these these letters and these codes are not in that order, and then probably go around solving these questions. And if you probably get a dead end, then it's obvious that the paper setter has not really cleared that ambiguity, and the paper setter wants you to assume that uh, it's in a particular order. So unless given, uh, unless something is clearly given, always assume that it's not in a particular order and then proceed to, uh, proceed to solving this question. So we'll see this question. Uh, the certain code uh, states that 8 to 9 corresponds to how art thou, 958 corresponds to thou art good, and 15873 means thy good and thou bad. So, uh, so archaic English, so people might not really uh, People might not really understand these words or they might not really be well versed this word. So this is probably an idea uh, to drive people away from this question. The central idea when you are solving this question is that you should understand what where the overlap lies. So in this case, let's go to the first two strings. So 8 to 9 is present here and 8, 5, 9 is present here. So 8 and 9 are common to these two strings. So we will simply figure out 8 and 9. So we will figure out what corresponds to 8 and 9. So 8 and 9, how art thou? So any two words have to correspond to 8 and 9 and thou art good, any two words have to correspond to 8 and 9. So which two words are common here? Art is common and thou is common. Right? So thou corresponds to either of 8 or 9 and art corresponds to the other. So let, let, let's make a line here and let's uh, just put these two words uh, in front of 8 and 9. So art and thou are present. So let art be here, let thou be here. So this, this line indicates that we do not really know the relation between 8, 9, art and thou. But we know for a matter of fact that 8 and 9 correspond to art and thou in some order. So uh, once we know the uh, codes for 8 and 9, so 8 and 9 corresponds to art and thou. So 2 should correspond to how. So we will simply put 2 here, put a dash and put how here. This language is very important. So whenever you are solving a paper, uh, all your talkers will tell you that they have, a, they have developed a certain language when they are solving a paper. Uh, this is nothing but it's called strategy. Uh, there, there are some fancy words for this, but then again, it's the language that you are developing. Every question will require a certain language to solve. Uh, every question will require a certain approach, a certain method which is present. And uh, unless you have a language of your own, or probably you you know how to solve this question, you will have to start from scratch, which is very difficult during a paper. So develop some language on your own. Uh, to dash how means that to corresponds to how. Again, going to the second uh, thing, 8 and 9 are already taken, so 5 will correspond to good. So I will put 5 here, dash, good. So that is present here. And then we will go to the uh, third one. So 15873 is present. And if 15873 is present, then this corresponds to thai, good, and thou, bad. So we will see which, which ones are already taken. So we know the codes for 5, so 5 is here. Uh, we do not know the code for 1. We know that 8 can have probably one code, so that is present here. 7 and 3 are present, again we do not know the codes for 7 and 3. So uh, if 5 and 8 are something that are known, um, then we can remove this ambiguity between 8 and 9. Because 8 and 9 corresponds to art and thou. And if either of them is present here, then we know for sure that 
that number corresponds to that row. So if 8 is present and dou is present in this sentence, then 8 should correspond to dou. So 8 corresponds to dou and 9 corresponds to r, that is something that we know. And 2, how and 5 good we already knew. But the status of the other 3, so 1, 3 and 7, we do not really know which one stands for which one. And we are left with uh, die. We know the code for good. We do not know the code for and. So and will come here. And we do not know the code for bad. So bad will come here. So uh, these are the uh, codes that are hanging. We do not really know which stands for which one. So this we have already represented 8 down, 9 art, 2 how, 5 good, and 1, 3, 7 can stand up either of die and or bad. So we will solve the questions now. Uh, which of the following is the is a possible code for die? So for die, a possible code is nothing but 1, 3 or 7. Either of 1, 3, 7 can stand for die. So we will mark this as the answer. So again, very, be very careful when you are going through the options. Otherwise, it will, it will be very difficult for you to uh, get the correct option. Uh, what is the code for DAO? So again, we know that the code for DAO is 8. So this is a very simple question. So we will mark 8 as the answer. What is the code for HOW? So again, we know that 2 stands for HOW. So that will be the correct answer. Which of the following may possibly provide the code for down no good? So now may possibly provide is very important. This is a very important statement. And may signifies possibility. And so you have to be sure that uh, those three words could be the, uh, could stand for certain codes. So that, that is something which denotes possibility. Be very careful on this part. Uh, which of the following may possibly provide? So we will write down what we know. Uh, for down we know that the code is 8. Uh, no, we do not really know because it's not coded here. And good again, we do not. Uh, we know the code for good is five, so we'll put five here. So eight dash five has to be the answer. So we'll just check for the options if we can get something. Uh, eight dash five. This is one of the formats which is acceptable. Eight seven zero not accepted. Five zero seven not ex accepted. Eight zero seven not accepted. So it's either five zero eight or none of these. Now the important thing to notice here is that no is nowhere mentioned here in this code or these strings which have been given in the given data, right? So no cannot have a code among 1, 2, 5, 3, 7, 8 or 9. No cannot have either of these codes. So no has to have a code which is either of 0, 4 or 6, assuming that they are taking only single letters, which is obvious in this case. So if no corresponds to 0, then 805 or 508 or 058, whatever be the combination, uh, it will be possible. So this is a correct option and we can mark this. So just be on the lookout for some cases wherein it will be 518 or 538 or something and then probably it will become more confusing because uh, we, we, we might get confused saying that we do not know the code for 137 but that is not really the case. And going to the final question, which of the following is a code for how good thou art? So again we will write down whatever we know. So how corresponds to 2, uh, good corresponds to 5, thou corresponds to 8 and art corres corresponds to 9. So 2, 5, 8, 9 in any order should be our answer. So 2, 5, 8, 9 is present, yes, that is our answer. 8, 2, 9, 3, not really what we require. 7, 1, 8, 3, again, something we don't require. 8, 7, 9, 5, again, something we don't require. It can, of course, be determined, so this is also wrong. So A is the answer. So coding and decoding, the important thing to understand here is where to start. So to get a starting point, you have to compare two strings. Whatever is common, you write that down. And if there is only one common uh, code or one common word or one common letter, then that is something which is explicitly mentioned. So have a lang language, something like this. So if you can write something like this, then it will uh, lead to less confusion. And you can easily understand that this is something which is given. This is something which is ambiguous. So, and this is something which has been found out later, but again, you know exactly what, what is happening here. So be on the lookout for these kind of things, uh, be on the lookout for these kind of languages that you can develop. And once you have a language for each and every question, each and every question type, then probably you can solve it in a quicker manner. Uh, it will reduce the time between reading the question and starting to solve that question. And that again can save uh, some five to 10 seconds easily. And the cumulative, whatever you get out of uh, saving time across all these questions will be something which will create the difference at the end. Uh, so I hope that this video clears some doubts regarding coding and decoding when it comes to reasoning. Do have a look at our other videos as well. Thank you.